Hey gang, welcome back to another video. So one of the things I found that really makes a space is lighting. And if you're building a Star Wars themed room, it's an absolute must. So with that in mind, I wanted to build one of the light fixtures seen around Galaxy's Edge that would fit seamlessly into any sci-fi themed space. So let's get into it. During a recent visit to the park, I noticed this light fixture that can be found above the droid depot and many of the cast member access doors throughout Batu. And what's great about this shape is that it's essentially a bunch of rectangles with 45 degree cuts taken out of it, which is perfect for a quick bit of 3D modeling. And after about an hour, I landed on the following design. Something I really like when I buy models is that they come in a bunch of pieces, and even better when they have some kind of slot and pin or snap together design. And this design has both, one for ease of printing and sanding with minimal supports, and two to help with alignment during glue up. I printed all of the parts in ABS filament at a 0 0.20 layer height since there weren't any real details that I needed to capture, plus a taller layer height makes for faster prints. But there were a few spots along the top edge where the supports left some shallow indentations, and even though I've sanded them mostly flat, I still want to fill in those areas, and for that I'll be using an ABS slurry. The ABS slurry is made from bits of supports, purged filament blobs, and failed prints mixed with a bit of acetone until it turns into a syrup-like consistency. Then it can be brushed onto the surface to fill any small lines and eventually sanded flush after the acetone is flashed off. I've seen people use this method for joining parts too, but I found in the end that I needed some additional CA glue to give me a really strong bond. After a bit of curing time, I could take another pass of sanding over the spots where I applied the slurry, and once I'd smoothed those areas out, could start gluing in all of the parts. Before I get into priming and painting, I realized I'd forgotten to add channels inside the main body of the light to hold a frosted panel, which will be acting as my lamp glass, so I quickly made two channels and glued them in place. And with that out of the way, I can get to priming everything. As is my usual on 3D printed projects, I'm using an automotive filler primer, which will get dusted over the surface, followed by a bit of dry time to allow the solvents to evaporate, and then a heavier coat. It's a brisk 92 degrees today, so the solvents have flashed almost immediately, and so a heavier coat went down right away, and then everything was given time to dry. This automotive primer dries much faster than the hardware store variety, and they're roughly about the same price. So if you enjoy finishing 3D prints, I definitely look into them. Once the primer had dried, I noticed I hadn't added on the back panel. So I traced out the position of the panel with a pencil so that I'd know where to apply glue, and then scuffed the surface with an 80 grit sanding stick to give the glue something to bite into. Then it was just a matter of applying the glue and pressing the panel into position. And when it was set, the panel got a coat of primer and allowed time to fully cure. As I was getting ready to paint the fixture, I noticed a few layer lines. So I did a bit of last minute sanding with some 120 and 500 grit sandpaper, and then everything got wiped down with a tack cloth, which should remove any dust and debris that's still on the parts. And then I can get to painting. From what I can tell, these lights have kind of an off-white or very light gray color as the base. So that's what I'll use. I had this color left over from my BDX droid build and was thinking that it fit the part perfectly. I'll give the main body panels a coat of paint and set them aside to dry for a while, and then I can switch to painting the strain relief connectors with a metallic spray paint. A 
A few hours have passed and I can finally install my fake glass sheet, which just so happens to be a plastic cutting mat. They're too see-through on their own, but I found that if I stack three of them, it creates a good amount of diffusion. So off camera, I cut them into nine by 10 and three quarter inch pieces, and then could slide the first sheet into position, starting from the back and pushing it towards the front. I found it to be a bit easier this way because the sheets will follow the inner contour of the fixture. And once you've got the first one in, the additional sheets will slide along the first. Now that all the paint is dry, I can glue in the strain relief connectors with some CA glue and get to weathering. I'm trying a different approach this time by using some water mixable oil paint. I've added some to this tiny spray bottle of water, which I'll use to dust the surface as well as keep the paints from drying out during this 92 degree day. I'm also going to use a brush with non-diluted paint to really add some more contrast to the recesses and corners. I initially wasn't sure that I liked this method since the water kept beading on the surface, but the further along I got, the more I found my rhythm to get the look I was after. It probably wasn't the smartest thing to use a new technique without testing it first, but sometimes you just have to get your hands dirty and find your way. I kept working the paint around the light fixture, adding some, removing some, spraying some of the thinned out paint from a distance, all in the name of trying to get a unique organic looking finish. And when it looked like it's been sitting outside for a while, I left it to dry. I may add a bit of textured rust or paint chipping, but I'm not sure yet. So this is good for now while I think about my options. The last thing I need to do is figure out the light source. I wanted this light to have some kind of movement to it, as if the power system it was connected to was unstable. So I pulled together some code and loaded it into an ESP32 controller, which is seated into a breakout board so that I don't need to solder my connections. The controller has a NeoPixel ring attached to it, and while it's not the brightest light source, it should get the job done. Plus, this is an accent light, so it's okay if it's not bright enough to be the only light in the room. To keep everything in place, I'll be using a bit of VHB tape on the back of the controller board and sticking it in position. The ring light had a raised spot on the back where all the wires are soldered, so rather than use the high bond tape, I'll be installing it with some high temp hot glue. This adds a bit of bulk to the back of the ring to create an offset that will make good all around contact without crushing the wire leads. Once everything is in place, I can thread a micro USB cable through the strain relief connectors and into the body of the light fixture, and then plug it into the microcontroller. Now I just need to hit the power button on the USB cable and I can call this one done. Now the heaviest lift of any themed room build is to make the space feel authentic. And there's no easier way to accomplish that than to add practical elements like these lights that not only look the part, but serve a purpose. That's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. But most importantly, go make something. Mm -hmm.